I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Chris Eliza, political commentator and senior advisor of DGA Group. Chris, thank you so much for joining me again. Thank you for having me. We have a lot of news to discuss today. The DNC officially wrapped. Vice President Kamala Harris officially accepted the nomination last night in a speech where she was really able to reintroduce herself to the country. How do you think she did? Yeah, and I would say, you know, honestly, probably introduce herself to a lot of the country. I always say the, the vice president is usually the most unknown, known person in America in that, of course, I think most people, if you walked up to them on the street and said, who's the vice president, they would probably know. But then if you said, name me one other fact about Kamala Harris, they might not be able to do it. So I think that's why the convention was particularly important here, right? Remember, we're dealing with a really truncated timeline. Where, uh, a month ago, you know, she was not the nominee. Joe Biden had just dropped out. Well, she's the nominee now, so you gotta introduce her to people. She's gotta step out in her own right. I think she did a good job. I don't think the speech was overwhelmingly good, but I think it went through the beach you need, which is, here's her personal story, Here's where she and Trump differ. Here's her broad vision for the country. So in that regard, I would say a success. And she did differentiate herself from Donald Trump. Her campaign for the past few weeks has been, I'm the prosecutor, he's the felon. But how do you think she differentiated herself from Joe Biden? Because voters were not enthusiastic about Joe Biden running for a second term. He was not floundering in the polls a bit when he dropped out. So do you think mm -hmm. she was able to, you know, make a carve out her own path? So what's interesting is I think she tried to carve her own path by not talking all that much about Joe Biden. In the very beginning of the speech, she said, you know, Joe and I did great things. It was always going to be sort of a hard convention in that regard because they pushed Joe Biden out, but they also kind of wanted to honor him because he was the sitting president of the United States and he's in their party. So it's always a little bit tough. So I think what she effectively did is get the Joe Biden stuff out of the way early Monday night. They did the Biden night. He spoke and then he left. So there wasn't all that much to talk about other than maybe have a line about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris did great things. But you're exactly right. The truth of the matter is Joe Biden is an unpopular president on the overall, on the economy, on his handling of immigration, on whether or not the country's on the right track or going in the wrong direction. Kamala Harris doesn't really want to be linked to all of those things. And Donald Trump is going to try his hardest to do exactly that between now and the election. The DNC was uh, really trying, uh, the Democrats were trying rather, to make themselves appear to be that big tent party. Hey, we're mm -hmm. here for you no matter what race, religion, age, political leaning. And Brett Baer from Fox said this, that he thought parts of Kamala Harris's speech, quote, were specifically aimed at the Nikki Haley Republicans around the country. Do you agree there? Yes, totally. Um, I thought one of the biggest differences and really striking between the Republican convention and the Democratic convention, they were separated by about a month because of the Olympics, but I covered both. In the Democratic convention, all of the big name speakers, that's uh, obviously Kam Har Kamala Harris, vice presidential nominee Tim Walz, both of the Obamas, Barack and Michelle, uh, Oprah Winfrey, all of them made an explicit argument to folks, not in the room, but watching at home. Look, you may not agree with us on everything, you, but we are a home for you. We can share your values. There are things we have in common. And that is a real contrast to the Republican National Convention where there wasn't a lot of that. It felt to me like it was aimed a lot more at the people in the room, the Republican base, the Trump base. And to me, you're much smarter to use a convention not to unite your base, but really because they should already be united, but to reach out or begin the outreach to some of those people who we know don't follow politics all that closely and haven't made their mind up. And to your point, your base is probably going to come out and vote for you. It's those independents and undecideds that you really need. And Oprah did a good job of that. She said, hey, all you independents, I'm an independent too. Yep. Listen to me now. Come out, vote your values, vote Kamala Harris.